So many substances are fundamentally hydrocarbons, but they have a group of atoms called functional groups attached to them. So there are many classes of functional groups, and we're going to go each over each one individually, but this chart gives an overview of each type. So over here, the open bonds represent that these functional groups are bonded to a larger chain of hydrocarbons. So for example, over here, this OH group might be bonded to a CH3, or a CH3-CH2. So this open bond just represents a hydrocarbon fragment. So the first type of functional group are the alcohols. And alcohols contain the functional group, which is called the hydroxyl group. It's an OH. And you name them by replacing the last E in the alkane, which the alcohol comes from, with an OL. For, so for example, methane becomes methanol, and ethane becomes ethanol. And we have to specify the position of this OH group with a number, just like how we represent the position of any substituent group. And alcohols can be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary. And this depends on how many hydrocarbon fragments are binded to the carbon where the OH group is attached. So for example, we have this alcohol here. And the, the parent alkane, you can see here, the longest chain is just three carbons. So this is a propane-based alcohol. And so we want to give the OH group the lowest number possible. So we start the numbers over here. So the OH group is attached at position 1. So the base of this alcohol becomes 1-propanol. And then we have a substituent, chlorine, at position 3. So the name is 3-chloro-1-propanol. And then we can classify this as a primary alcohol by looking at how many hydrocarbon fragments are bi binded to this carbon where the OH group is attached. So you can see there's only one chain binded to this carbon. So it is a primary alcohol. So the next class of molecules are the aldehydes and the ketones, which both contain the carbonyl group, which is a carbon binded to two things, which may be hydrocarbon fragments, and then double binded to an oxygen. So in ketones, this carbonyl group is bonded to two carbon atoms. So these two open bonds are with a carbon. There's a carbon here and a carbon here. And to name the ketones, we replace the E in the alkane with O-N-E. So over here, we have, this is based on propane, because the chain is with three carbons. And we have to indicate the position of the oxygen, which is double bonded to this carbon. So it's at position 2, so this molecule is 2-propanone. And ketones often have useful solvent properties, which means they can dissolve many things. And then we have aldehydes, in which the carbonyl group is bonded to at least one hydrogen atom. And we name them by replacing the E in the alkane with Al. So for example, this aldehyde is based on butane, since it has four carbons in a row. And notice how the double bond to oxygen and the hydrogen are always going to be at the end of a chain. So for aldehydes, we do not have to specify the position of the double bond O. Instead, we always give it the location number 1. So we start here the numbering, 1, 2, 3, 4. So then this, this chlorine substituent group is at position 3, and this molecule is going to be 3-chlorobutanol. And the special characteristic of aldehydes 
is their strong odors. For example, the molecules which are responsible for the smell of vanilla and cinnamon are aldehydes. Next we have the carboxylic acids which contain the carboxyl group, which is a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen and also bonded to an OH group. And so these acids are usually weak acids in an aqueous solution and we name them by replacing the E in the alkane with an OIC. So a common carboxylic acid that you probably already know is acetic acid. So looking at the structure you can see that it, it's based on the alkane ethane. And so the actual name of this acid is ethanoic acid. Acetic acid is just the common name. The next class of compounds we have is the ester. And esters are formed in a reaction with a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. And so we name esters by taking the parent alcohol and attach a YL to its ending, and then the parent acid with an OATE ending. So for example, here we have ethanoic acid reacting with ethanol to produce this ester, which is ethyl. We get that from the ethanol, the parent alcohol, removing this ending and attaching the YL, and then ethanoate, which we get from this ethanoic acid, removing this ending and attaching the OATE. And this reaction also forms water. So you can see the OH in the carboxyl group in the acid and the H in the hydroxyl group in the alcohol combine to form water. And then the fragments of whatever's left are combined. And the characteristic of esters is their sweet and fruity odor. For example, the compound that makes these smell in bananas and oranges are uh, esters. The last class of molecules are amines. And amines are derivatives of ammonia, NH3, in which some or all of the nitrogen and hydrogen bonds are replaced with nitrogen to carbon bonds. And again, we can classify amines as primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending on how many of this NH bonds are replaced with NC bonds. So many simple amines have common names, but if we want to give the systematic name, we just pretend that the amine is basically a sub substituent group, and we use the name amino for this group. So for example, over here, we have a chain of four carbons. So this parent alkane is butane. And then we have an NH2 attached to this second carbon. So this molecule is 2 dash butane And it's a primary amine because only one of these NH bonds is broken to form a bond with the carbon here. It still has two of its hydrogens left. And amines often have a smelly, fish-like odor. For example, the odor in decaying animal or human tissue.